cell phones in the future, you're selling a service that's going to be, you know, obsolete in 10 years. And I was like, yeah, maybe. But for now, I'm building up a network. I'm getting customers. I'm making residual income. And understand when we do get into electricity, because it's going to deregulate. This is what I said back in the day. This when is we do senior get into vice president, and gas and these Mr. Jeff we'll Weber. We'll be perfectly positioned with a network so that we can get paid. He on says he likes to stand because he can't sit. Superhighway. And he doesn't like to watch himself. Superhighway. If you have a network on that superhighway, the more services we add to that network, if you have a large group of people, he says he has ADD. Their own and all their, their customers on that new service. He's so one of the on top where we going, money earners in this ago, industry. I built well over a million customers that we get paid on every month and hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of I've met him in person at an international event. And I don't share that to impress you guys. I share this to impress upon you that I was a bartender before. I was making $6 an hour working construction for my dad before this. I bust tables before this. I don't have a background doing stuff like sales and marketing, and I never did public speaking before. So the reason I share this with you guys is if I can have success, if I can make money doing this, you guys can do a lot better than me. I did it on long distance. You guys get gas, electricity, cell phone, and everything else. My average customer's bill spent $15 a month. You guys have an average customer that spends 50 to hundreds of dollars a month on these bills. So your opportunity is 10 times bigger, a hundred times bigger for you today than it ever was for me when I started. I remember I recruited Efren Tejada in the business. He was one of my first five recruits. I walked up to him in the gym and they gave us a stupid script. At the time I walked up to him, makes fun with me. If you ever watch Efren Tejada, he's a top senior vice president, influencer in ACM today. He's got a huge team in Latin America and all over the U.S. And uh, I remember when I recruited him, I went up to him and he teases, he jokes around every time he does a training and it makes me so annoyed. But he says, Jeff walked up to me at the gym because we went to the same high school. And so at the gym at Powerhouse, he was always working out with his white t-shirt and his, you know, little mustache at the time. And it, his, him and his friend had their like, heads pretty much shaved. So uh, he was like uh, a little intimidating, but I didn't care. I was talking to everybody. So I had an excuse to walk up to him because I knew him from, he went to high school with my brother at Palo State's High School. So I walked up to him and I said, don't do this script, by the way. But this is the script I use. I said, I said, Efren, if the money was right and only if the money was right, okay? And if it fits into your schedule and only if it fits into your specific schedule, only then would you be open to making extra money part-time outside of what you do. And he looked at me and he like started thinking, I mean, I kind of knew him like we were acquaintances and he goes, yeah. So I was a little bit taken back. I'm in the gym. I don't have a pen on me. I didn't have like, I'm mean, I had nothing in my pockets because I was working out. So I said, okay, hold on. And I went to the front desk and I got pen and paper from the front desk person at our house gym. And I walked up to him and I got his number and I said, okay, I'll call you. And then I literally called him and invited him to presentations that we were doing in Culver City, California. And I called him and invited him and, uh, Talk to him. And he flaked on me. We had a meeting on Tuesday, he flaked. We had a meeting on Thursday or Saturday, and he flaked. For three or four weeks in a row, and he was like 20 years old at the time. Broke. Single dad. And he flakes on me every week. And I was like, this is super humbling. So I'm like, this guy's younger than me. He's not, it's not like he's wealthy. And he's flaking on me every week. But I just kept inviting him because I thought, you know what? If you're going to have a work ethic, if I'm going to do whatever it takes, I'm just going to keep inviting him. So four weeks later... Five weeks later, whatever it was, he showed up. Coincidentally, it was right around the time that people get their tax return checks. It was $495 at the time to join ACN. Obviously, it's much less expensive today. And coincidentally, he came, saw the presentation, um, and happened to have his tax return uh, check on him. So he said, you know what? I happen to have, you know, coincidentally, it must be fate. I have my tax return check. I'm going to use this to get started. Signed up in the business. And six or eight months later, he hit regional director. And a couple years later, several years later, he hit regional vice president and eventually senior vice president. And I was doing all these presentations with him. I met him too. To top vice president, Mr. Mike Basuti. And I met him to too. Top vice president, Mr. Dean Chirawi. 
And literally, we promoted vice president after vice president. And this is a topic that you're going to hear from um, Mr. Uh, you're going to hear from Franco LaFranco about taprooting. But literally, Mike Rasuti fell on my 21st level on Efren's 20th level in our teams. Can you imagine? So we had to spend you know weeks or months talking to and meeting with people and showing them ACN before we eventually found Mike Basuti. And then probably 40 or 50 levels down, we found Dean Tirali. And so you just keep working through people until you find leaders. So I'll just tell you guys, as you're building this, you gotta have a tremendous work ethic. You gotta talk to everybody. Um, and I could tell you story after story of what we did. But what I, I will tell you guys is um, when I was coming up in the business, you have to figure out a good, a big reason why if you want to figure out how to, your, how to be successful. And if your why is big enough, the how to doesn't matter. So my reason why was real simple. Growing up, I was the black sheep of eight kids in my family. And I was told growing up, I was a loser, quitter, failure. And I was never going to amount to anything by my dad. Matter of fact, my dad and I got into a physical argument a couple of years before I started ACN. And when I signed up, I hadn't spoken to my dad for three years. So I remember thinking, this will be the first thing in my life I don't quit. When I get promoted, we're going to be on, get promoted on stage at international convention. I'm going to call my dad on stage, my mom, and tell my parents that I'm not a loser, I'm not a quitter, I'm not a failure, I'm an RVP. And I remember when I told, I would tell this story at every home meeting, at every presentation, I would tell this exact story. And literally my team, they would join the business and build it for my reason why, because they wanted to get me on stage so I could uh, prove to my parents I could be successful. And I remember one of my friends said, Jeff, what if your dad gets sick or he passes away and you don't get to tell him that you love him and, and prove to him you're successful before he passes away? So I, I was no longer my friend. I didn't talk to that guy anymore because it pissed me off. And I remember I, I would wake up at five, six in the morning and start making calls. Um, I would go to bed at midnight, one o'clock, and I'd be still making calls. People would be like, why are you calling me at midnight? I'd be like, because I'm so excited. And I'd be calling people at five, six in the morning the next morning again. And I would do that, whatever it took. And three years in the business, I hit regional vice president, called my parents on stage, and was able to tell my dad what I just said. But then my parents, they went through bankruptcy and lost everything in real estate. They made and lost about one or two hundred million dollars around the time I was in college in real estate. So as the oldest son of eight kids, I thought if it's going to be, it's up to me. And I wanted to give back to my parents. So I went out and we went out and bought my parents about a one point two million dollar home. And we set that whole thing to video when we surprised my parents with this house. So what I wanted to do, if it's possible, I know I talked to Orrin about this is see if we could play this video just to give you an idea of what's possible, when your reason why is big enough, um, what it causes you.